Hi, this is Kevin Tharp. Today we're looking, uh, we're starting by looking at the open brush folders and we're looking in the media library to begin with. So the media library is a place that allows you to import content from outside of open brush and use it within the content within your uh, sketch, within the scenes that you're doing, whatever uh, terminology you want to use. And there's three areas where you can import content into your sketches. There's images, which is exactly what it says, JPEG and PNG images uh, that you can import. Models are objects and that sort of uh, item that you can um, import into there. Um, so the supported model format mets are OBG and FBX. Um, and then videos uh, as well. So uh, MP4s is, is what I've been using. We're gonna go into Open Brush. We're gonna see what it looks like, but uh, these are the folders that you're working with. So you, you see some uh, images that I've got included in there. We'll be drawing them into our um, diagram. We've got some objects in here and we have some videos in here that we can use for uh, demonstrating what we're doing today once we get into Open Brush. So now let's go to Open Brush. Okay, so now we are in side of an open brush sketch that I have created specifically to demonstrate uh, the ways that you can import content. Everything that you see in front of you is some kind of imported content. It is either a image, an object, or it is a video. So uh, everything that you see here is one of those items, the place where you find it if you are uh, come in, you go to the advanced mode. We are looking in the local media library and the local media library has sections that correspond to the folders that we were just looking at. So there's local models, there's local images, and there's local videos. So these are all stored in those folders and that is where you add them from. So for instance, this object right here is included right there. And the way that I got that, this actually came out of another sketch that I had done. So a different tilt brush sketch. Uh, I had used the experimental features and um, I'll go ahead and show you how to turn on the experimental features right now. So, because that may be the first thing you wanna get to. So in order to turn on the experimental features, cause this is the only way to export this in this way, you go to settings and then you t choose this little turn on experimental mode and then it'll restart. And when it restarts, you will have a panel like this experimental uh, somewhere available to you. When that happens, what you do is uh, first you have to have strokes in your uh, diagram. So I'm just gonna select that stroke um, you need to select the stroke and then with it still selected you go save selected stroke to model catalog you click on that it creates the mo the local model and then we just got to find which one it is there it is right there there is a copy of that stroke. Actually, I must have had another um, stroke. Yep, there's a stroke that I didn't see that was offline. I grabbed that too. So um, anyway, so that is now imported where everything that was selected as a stroke is now a model and you can import them and treat them all as individual items. Whereas here, they're eight, treated individually. So that's how you get something like that to show up into your local models. Once you have access to those, you can import as many copies of that as you want into the same sketch, or you can import it into as many sketches as you want. 
so that is a, a very useful tool, especially if there's something that you reuse regularly in different sketches, such as a signature. So that's the local models. And in here, you'll notice that I've got, um, I've got the Andy. So this is actually a model that I imported from there. This is native to Tilt Brush. So if you don't have anything else, you're going to have the Tiltosaurus and you are going to have the Andy models. And so uh, you can import those or you can import anything that's a .obj file. So if you're creating in uh, 3D software, you're creating th 3D models, as long as you can export them as OBJs or what was the other one? I think it was SDKs. Um, you can import them into OpenBrush and use them within your uh, sketches. So local images um, showed you this folder. These are the ones. Now, in this case, you'll see that some of the things that I'm using, I have this picture uh, of myself that I used to create this model over here. Um, so the way that I created this model was that I imported this image and then I used it as a, a tool for as an image, a reference image to uh, create that other piece of artwork for it. Then once I had that created, I selected all those strokes. I used that experimental feature to export those strokes. So this is now available as a model to me. So that's one way that you can, um, can use the images because that's what we're talking about right now. Other things that I've got as images in here are these words. So one of the things that was always frustrating to me was that there was no way of doing um, typesetting, so to speak, in this software. So what I'll do, like what these were, is I uh, created those. This is an image that I created in Word or Photoshop or whatever. And then I imported those into here as images and I can then bring text to my uh, my artwork in ways that I couldn't before. Uh, so that was a, a, a great thing when we got the ability to, to start doing that. And the third thing is videos. So when you get to the video section, let me get rid of uh, some of these. When you come to the video section, what you have is, and I've selected each of these three videos are videos that are in this local videos. And what you can do is whichever one that you've selected last, you've got the ability in this media libraries folder. If you are on the videos, this panel control panel that allows you to uh, affect the, the sound um, and the playback of the uh, item that you're dealing with are there for you to work with. So one of the things that is important to note is that with objects, and again, this is an object that I imported, a model that I op imported from a previous sketch. This is three-dimensional. You can see it from every direction. But anytime that you have a image or a video, it is uh, transparent when you come from behind. So it's only visible from that front angle. Uh, and so that's, that's an important thing that you need to be aware of. But it's also a resource that you can use uh, in order to use these videos as part of the scene that you're setting up. So I'm going to turn this one on and I get that control simply by touching it. And I don't have to have my selection tool on when I'm doing this. All I have to do is touch it. And you'll notice that whichever one I click upon, actually, I don't even have to click it. As long as I touch it, 
I can switch that and I can set each of those to playing. And it will play, depending upon the capability of your system, it will play multiple um, videos So that, for instance, at this moment, we've got all three of those videos that are playing. Another nice thing about this is that you have the ability to, uh, by gripping it, and again, gripping by the inside uh, of the controller on both hands, you can resize this to make it just absolutely tiny or enormous and you can use that as background or foreground content for what you're doing. So if you're wanting to uh, create different effects using these videos, it, it really gives you some uh, cool capabilities to do this. So one of the things I want to do, just to, to sort of seed your thought process, I'm going to hide this. I've got all of them running. I don't want to hide the sun's flare. So I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. And I'm going to move this one a little further back. Let me just set up the scene here for you. So we got the sun. We've got the nebula. Maybe we'll make this a little bit smaller. All right. And then what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this out of the way so it's not being seen. I'm going to go to the spectator camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the spectator camera so that it does a rotation around. And I do that by choosing uh, circular. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so that the um, the spectator camera goes around in a circle and you'll see what happens uh, to this as you do it. So we'll just start it over here and let that play. And you'll notice that as it goes around, those different uh, videos or pictures, images or videos, have the ability to come in and out of sight based upon the direction that the camera is filming at that time. So that can make for some interesting tools uh, where you cannot see it through what from one direction, but the other direction you can. So you could set up some collages or whatever. The, the Just another tool in your arsenal for uh, how to do this. Now I'm going to bring the spectator camera back over here and we'll go ahead and finish up this. So so what we're dealing with is the local videos. If you choose add media, it will open the folder on your desktop so that you can access it. Again, you can turn these videos on and off by touching the one that you want to affect at the time. And there are the options for models, images, and local videos. So that pretty much uh, rounds out what we're talking about today. This is kind of the, the last of the, the tools that I'm going to be talking about in this series uh, that are related to scene creation. And that is what these tools are for. They are to help you to create the scenes that you will later go on to film or export. And uh, that's all I've got for now. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.